He put something in you that's stronger than all of the things that you're fighting. Than all of the things you're going through. Y'all remember that? We saw that in Romans. Read that. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Thank you, Jesus. Somewhere around there, maybe there was 16, I don't know exactly where it is, but it's over there in Romans chapter 8. Who shall separate us? Yeah. What's, what comes before that? Thank you, Brother Isaac. I appreciate y'all. And we know all things work together for good. All things work together for good. That's good too. Who shall separate us? Read that. What verse? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Where are you at? Verse 35. I think it goes. Well, just go ahead and read that. I mean, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine? Wait a minute. A and uh, Thank you, Jesus. Let's um, start in verse 16. Or 15. 14. Good. Well, well. Why don't we just go ahead and start at verse 1. I'm just go and read it. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Ain't that something? God's going to have a people without condemnation. Amen. Satan is constantly walking up and down the earth like a roaring lion seeking whom he can devour. And the scripture says that he is the accuser of the brethren. And he accused all these men of God. He accused Job. He accused as his job is to try to accuse you and to um, cause you to lose your confidence and lose your patience and lose your, your peace. And he tried to throw a wedge between you and God. He's the accuser of the brethren. Isn't he? he throw all these snares out there. And then, you know, when, um, when I'm praying like we all told, we fall into one, there he is, accusing us. I mean, he does it right now. You know God ain't hearing your prayer. You know that you've done this and you've done that. But the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins, don't it? I've had people that accuse me. Mm. I'm sure y'all read Facebook and all this stuff. Yeah. But Jesus said if they call him a Beelzebub, what are they going to call you? And if they've done it to Paul, then who, who are we? He said, blessed are you. When all men reveal you and revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. But that's right. And uh, I don't, all I do is tell people, they don't pray for them. They got a soul. Pray that they, God said, pray for your enemies. Didn't they? Love them. Pray for them. And, uh, don't throw really accusations against really accusations. Don't get in the mud with them. But love them and pray for them. This is how we know that we're children of God. I mean, you can go out there and prophesy. He says, though I speak with tongues of men and angels and have not charity, what good is it going to do me? Isn't it? Love make you no evil. Love, love don't go around speaking these things. Love don't go around trying to make each other look bad and expose each other. Love don't do all of that. Love covers a multitude of sin. And 
That's why Jesus said, some of them going to say, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and done this and got on, uh, and got on prayer line and done all this? He going to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Didn't he? He said, you know each other by the prophecies, didn't he? You know each other by what? By the fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Didn't he? You know each other by this love of God. And when all these raving accusations went out against me, I I just prayed and asked God to have mercy upon them. Because God himself knows. Sister Lou is the only woman I have ever touched. And uh, I have ever, you know, I mean, you growing up, of course you have girlfriends, boyfriends if you're a girl. Y'all you know what I'm talking about, puppy love and all that other kind of But, you know, God put us together through a prophet and uh, join us together. And uh, I'm grateful for those 50 some odd years. Somebody said, you plan on getting married again? I hope not. <laughs> it ain't broke, so I ain't trying to fix it. I hope not. I enjoyed what I had with my wife. But if it happens again, then, uh, hey, I'm hoping Jesus come before that. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. But anyway, let's read this. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Has made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Lord, help us to stay spiritual minded. Setting our affections on things above. Where Christ sits at the right hand of the magistrate. Seek to be spiritual minded. Seek to set your affections on spiritual things. The only thing that can fill that void is the Spirit of God. Isn't it? Sure, God gives us these natural carnal things to enjoy. But that's happiness. Happiness is temporal. But the, but the joy that comes through the Spirit is eternal. You can't get rid of that, that joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, you can people, family, material things, all that stuff makes you happy, but it's temporal. You need something that's going to reach down into your soul, down deep into your spirit, and fill that voidness. And only the Spirit of God can comfort you and fill that emptiness and that voidness. Amen. That's right. But God does bless us with these natural things, didn't he? He saw Adam and said, Ain't good for man to be alone. So he gave him Eve, didn't he? And all of these are in order and they have their place. And every man, you know, God blesses us. Some people can live a life of um, singleness and some can't. And we all are human beings. And we have emotion. And we have feelings. And we all have these things. But above all of this, put your spiritual life ahead. And, 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 and when you're going through that valley and going through that uh, discouragement and going through that lonesomeness and all of that, God knows how to fill that void and he knows how to help you. But yet, at the same time, he knows how to put people in your life that will help you also. That's right. So we look at the whole picture of it. Read verse 6 again. For to be carnally minded is, is death. Just to have our mind on natural things is not going to help us with what we're going through in our spiritual life. Right. To be carnally minded, just 
carnal mind. It's not just it's not talking about uh, lust of the flesh and all that. Just having just a natural mind. Just trying to make it through life. Trying to get your bills paid. Trying to and all of that involves carnal life. You know. And but there is a spiritual life that God wants us to um, live in. And whether we uh, get these natural things or not, that spiritual life is so much more uh, fulfilling. Isn't it? But I know we flesh and we're down here on this earth and as long as we're down here on this earth we're going to be flesh. And we're going to contend with these Fleshly thing. We're going to have emotions. We're going to have feelings. Because we're human beings. And the spirit comes to comfort us. Comes to help us. Comes to strengthen us. Comes to get us through these things. Horn eggs. Anybody ever been a broken horn eggs? Huh? That's what the Spirit comes to help us in these areas. And God knows how to take broken lives and mend them back together again. And we're so close to the end now. I heard somebody tell me that uh, but I've been Brother Terry. I hadn't watched the news today. And uh, telling me what I was telling about the Russia. And uh, over there in the Middle East, how that uh, things crank it up, crank it up over there. And God said, when you begin to see these armies surround Jerusalem, He said, know that the end is upon you. Look at all these armies around Jerusalem. And there was seven of these angels. It wasn't just Lucifer, but it was seven of these mighty angels that was cast out of heaven. Seven of these great giant generals. Lucifer was ran up there, and uh, from him came, I mean, the only, a lot of these billions of angels, they praising God, but he would be, Lucifer would receive the praises and offer it to God. He was a high priest in heaven. And, and God is a consuming fire. And that fire and that light would come out of God and it would go through Lucifer into the other angels and others. He was a reflector. Hmm. He was the um you know, when God made him, he, he, he made him where he could even create fire. He could create light. Lucifer still light. He can create light. But the Bible speaks about these angels, how they uh, transform themselves into angels of light, but they're devils. You see what I'm saying? He said the very elect to be deceived if it was possible. Is it possible for the elect to be deceived? Huh? Well, if it ain't, then why would these seven that was up there? <laughs> Lucifer was the director. <laughs> yes, it's possible. It's possible. Because billions of these demons are being cast to this earth. And, and, and Paul said, Seducing spirits, diamonds of devils, and, and, and millions and millions of Christians going to be deceived. They're going to fall from their steadfastness because the scripture says that few there be that's going to make it. Many are called, but what? Few have been selected, have been chosen. Because God foresaw that these few was going to strive, was going to pray, was going to keep their eyes on Jesus. And you know, Satan, Paul said Satan would, would bewitch people, 
cast a spell upon them through these false teachers, doctrines of devils. Paul said, who have bewitched you? You know, witchery, witchcraft is when you mix truth with lies and you mix them together and you got a witchcraft there. And the devil can cast a spell upon you. Have you walking in the truth? And yet, a false anointing can be working through you. Lying spirits. I don't mean to go in all. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to go in. But I'm trying to tell you that if any man think that he's staying, let him take heed. Lest he fall. You can't fall. That's why God said, put on the whole arm. You can't be deceived. That's why he sent the spirit of truth to keep you walking in truth. That's why he gave you power. He said the Holy Ghost is in you so you can be endured with power, clothed with power, tearing till you be clothed with power. Don't let Satan come and find you naked. God gave you a whole armor. Don't lose that armor. Come on. Don't lose what he's given you. Remember? Remember I preached on? Oh, oh. When, you, when you got saved, he gave you a, a, a garment. And that garment, when God saved you and gave you that garment, he, he said that um, don't let nobody uh, destroy. Don't let nobody spoil you. Don't let nobody deceive you. Don't let no, I give you my word. I give you my spirit of truth. I've given you these fivefold ministries. I've given you, you know, many things to help get you through this life. But don't allow your garments to be spotted. When I say you, I put a spotless garment in you. I gave you a robe of righteousness. And don't allow that robe to be spotted up. Don't allow um, lies, lust, uncleanness, worldliness, the things of this world, false doctrine. Don't don't get that garment messed up, spotted up. He's coming, and he said, um, "Who have bewitched you? Who have cast a spell on you? You walked in the truth, but now you're being you, you, you're walking in the flesh. Who done this to you?" Amen. Amen. Finish reading. For to be calling mind in his death. You just live for the flesh. It's just going to bring death. Don't live just for the flesh. Don't just live just to try to satisfy this physical. This outward. There's something deeper God's got for us. Something richer that your eyes ain't seen. Your ears ain't heard. Had it into your heart. It's something greater than just the kernel. This kernel is just temporal. This body is just temporal. These relationships that we form while we're on this earth is just temporal. But the relationship that lasts forever is the one we have with Jesus. That's the one you want to continually to maintain. And these other relationships, you know, you 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 see all of that being fulfilled again. You make it through this life and get to heaven, and you'll pick that other relationship up with them, not in a natural way, not in a carnal way, but in an eternal way. Somebody, you mean to tell me? Now get the hell, man, gonna be right? Get married? Well, you, your life is gonna gonna be so much richer, so much deeper, so much fulfilling. Until this natural, this carnal, is is you know, it's not going to. It's going to be far beyond anything that you have in the natural then. Set your affections on things above. Not just on this stuff that's temporal. 
Not on this natural relationship. Not on this stuff that here today and gone tomorrow. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Read, verse, finish reading that. But to be spiritually minded. But to be spiritually minded. Is life and peace. I want life and I want peace. And I get that being spiritual minded. Minding things that are minding the things of the spirit. When we mind the things of the flesh, fear comes in, worry comes in, doubt comes in, bitterness comes in, upsetness comes in, confusion comes in. Because we're in the flesh. We're minding the things of the flesh. Well, go ahead. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Colonel mind, so I'm going to go to sleep. Colonel mind, so I'm going to stay and watch TV all night. Spirit be trying to wake, trying, trying to get you to pray. Colonel mind, so I'm going to watch gun smoke. <laughs> That's clean. It might be clean, but you know it's a whole lot better to set your affections and your, uh, on things above. They don't know watching some of these things, gun smoke and things like that. But God said, don't live in that kernel. Right. Don't live in that natural realm. You're not going to find which, what I have created you for if you just live in that temporal realm, that natural realm. It's just going to bring temporary happiness. I'm trying to bring you into eternal joy. A joy that's eternal. When something is eternal, it don't change. It don't change with the wind. It don't change with the weather, but it's there always. Go ahead. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Uh -huh. So them that are in the flesh cannot please God. Yes. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. What verse you Verse 9. Go ahead. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Right. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. I mean, you want him to quicken this monster by him. You know, get death out of him. Get sickness out of him. Get pain out of him. Get this out. Get high blood pressure out. Get all this uh, hypertension. Um, God said, I'll quicken that mortal body. Quicken means I give life to that mortal body. That body of the devil beats up on. That body of the devil brings infirmities on. That body of the devil brings all kind of Things against that mortal body. I'll give you health, strength. I'll quicken. I'll drive all this weakness, all this disease, all these infirmities out of that old mortal body. To, I want life and I want it more abundantly. I want a, more abundant means you got it in the spirit. But life in the natural means you're living without pain, without all these other things. Finish reading it. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors not to the flesh, but to live after the flesh. We don't want this flesh nothing. The flesh ain't got nothing but give us pain. It is. Come on. We don't own we don't own that old man nothing. Do we? Man, I don't I don't own this flesh nothing. I don't have nothing at the water hole. I don't have nothing at the clubs. I don't have, the world don't have nothing for you and for me. We're in the world, but we're not out of it. Go ahead. I'm not trying to be super spiritual. I'm just trying to tell you, you know, there's a better path for you to get through this life than just constantly, you know, thinking about the natural side. Go ahead. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. If you're through the Spirit, put to death. Put that old flesh at home. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Go ahead. If you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. 
Uh -huh. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Our Father. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and the children then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be also glorified together. For I reckon the sufferings of this present time. All these days we suffer because we take the stand for him. We don't have to take a stand for the Lord, whether you realize it or not. I went into a trance uh, a few months ago, early in the morning, and I saw myself sitting in the church, and the church was full. And then I saw, then I was taken in this trance, I was taken outside the church and I was looking uh, from a, a block, half a block off, looking in the church and I seen seven men come in the church with weapons, machine gun weapons and things, like they was from a, like the Middle East type people, like they was Muslims or something. And I, and I seen them at the church in Joplin, which we're one church, and we're one church. <laughs> May not want to be one, but I'm finna tell you. <laughs> but I saw these things coming. These, these seven men come into church and they had machine guns. And they was aiming them right at people's head. If you confess Christ, I'm gonna blow your brains out. People were sitting there kind of shocked. Hey, I know these things are coming. Well, I thought we had time to prepare for them. I thought we had time to get ready for them. But all of a sudden, it came upon people like a snare. Right. Bible said the um, temptation is going to come up on the face of the whole world like a snare. Right. It's not going to be just like the little country in Israel. It's not just going to be Afghanistan. It's not going to be just like um, Taiwan or these countries. But he said upon the face of the whole world, something is fixing to come. And it looked like that thing, them things, those men coming out like a snare. People wasn't, you know, we, we knew it. We had to understand it. It's one thing to understand with him in the last days. It's another thing to, to, to come to the realization that are you prepared? Have you put on the Lord Jesus? Are you watching? Are you praying? Are you equipped for what you're fixing to go through? It's one thing to have knowledge. It's another thing to walk in it. Amen. That it becomes a reality. Yes, sir. Isn't it? Yes, sir. We can't just have a knowledge that we live in the last days. We have got to become doers of the word. Amen. And the word, we become a doer of it. And then we're like a man that built his house on a rock. And when these things came, the wind began to blow. And when the lightning flash and the thunder and all of this hell came we stood because we became a doer and because we became a doer we was established upon the rock which is Jesus Christ and when the gates of hell tried to beat against us they couldn't because we was founded upon the word heaven and earth will pass away but my word will not pass away that rock is that word that rock is Christ in you. Christ in you. Fight your battle. Christ in you. Keeping you. Christ in you. Giving you the grace to get through. To get from one side to the other. Jesus got into the boat with the disciples. Let's go to the other side. And he went to the bottom of the ship and went to sleep. And a storm came. While they was out there in the middle of that storm. And they woke him up. So Lord, we're perishing. Wake up. Wake up that God in you. Wake up that word in you. Wake up that faith in you. Wake up that salvation that God's given you. Don't. Huh?
Don't let the devil just beat you upside the head. You're in a storm. Lord, help me. Give me what I need. Except we become his children. You know what he's talking about? You got to learn how to become a child before the Lord. I'm a child. Help me. Help me, Jesus. You know what I'm going through. You know I don't have what I need. Blessed are the poor in spirit. God wants you to come before him helpless. You know, I need help. I need your strength. I need your touch. You see what I'm going through. Help me. Your, your children never come to you. Say, Mama, Daddy. Man, I was up to four o'clock this morning. Little Gloria has swallowed a um, quarter. And um, um, Aquila had called me. And we was up to four o'clock this morning. Trying to, um, because she, you know, uh, vomiting and all this and that. She's okay now. She's okay. But, you know, we're like a little innocent baby. God, I don't know how to go out and come in and help me. Give me strength. Touch my heart. Touch my mind. Touch my spirit. I don't know which way to go from here. I don't know what to do. Help me. I'm a child. Keep that childlike spirit. Never think that you above being a child. God always wants you to come before him like a child. He always, he delights in knowing that you come before him with that, that way. Huh? Come before God. I remember Mama used to help me to go get um, some barbecue. You know, and uh, and I'm just a boy. And I look at her. You know, had that pitiful look. Mama said, Yeah, boy, <laughs> come on, get out of my face. That's why I come before God, pitiful. God help me. <laughs> God give me what I need. Lord, I, I need a touch. That's what keeps me going, is I come before Him. He's my Father. He's your Father. He wants you to come before Him with that look. I need help. I need your touch. I need your spirit. I need you to help me. Can't do this by myself. And you come before him that way, he'll help you. He won't fail you. Through your darkest hour, though you walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, he'll be with you. Hallelujah. There ain't nothing you're going through. Jesus hadn't already experienced it. Jesus. He's already went through it. Why? So, you know, he could become a man so he could understand you. So he can help you when you're hurting, when you're suffering, when you are down and out. He wanted to go through all of that so that he could be able to help you through it. I've been there. I've been through it. I've already made the way for you to survive it. I've already made a way for you to overcome. I've already made a way for you to get to the other side because that's what a Savior is. I didn't just come to save you from your sins, but I come to provide help. I come to give you peace. I come to give you strength. I come to help you through all of these things so you can know that you can look to me, looking unto Jesus. He's the author and the finisher of your faith for the joy. He endured the cross for your sake. He went through all of this for us so we can, so he can be touched when we're going through it. He can be touched when nobody else can be touched. You believe that? He can be touched. Yeah. You'll never forget that. You don't have to say a bunch of words to him. He, don't, he know the morning. He know the morning. He ain't got to say nothing to him. He knows. He just wants you to turn, turn to him. Give it to him. Finish reading that. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time. What verse is that? 18. 18, uh-huh are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. All this suffering we're going through now ain't nothing 
compared to the glory if you stay faithful. If you and continue to hang it in and let God make you through all he's going through. If you realize, you know, um, y'all remember that saying about how that uh, that uh, Indian saying, some kind of proverb that he was that was a man going through everything and while he was going through it, he was um, looking back and he saw one set of tracks, one set of footprints. He said, I've been through this, I've been through that. Where were you at, God? And the Lord spoke to him and said, it wasn't you, it was me carrying you. Those were my footprints and I was carrying you. Right. See, you think you're going through things by yourself. No, God is carrying you through these things. He's helping you to get through these things. Look back. It wasn't your goodness. It wasn't your smartness. It wasn't because you're different, because you're special. It's because grace has been sufficient. Grace has been helping you. Grace have taken you from one storm to another, from one trial to another, from one situation. It's God's grace. My grace is sufficient. I don't care what you go through. My grace is sufficient. Amen. Amen. Finish reading that. For the earnest expectation of the creature uh -huh. waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. For the creature was made by subject to vanity, not willingly. What verse is that? That's 20. 20. Go ahead. But by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Everything is growing. And you got storms, you got earthquakes, you got all kind of weather changes. You got wars, you got everything. You know, groaning, waiting for them. Come on. Something inside of you is groaning. But it's groaning for something deeper than what you see. Go ahead. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves. Something in us is groaning. And you don't know what it is. But something in us is groaning. Yeah. Groaning. Fun. Go ahead. Waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Uh, for as, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen. Waiting for the redemption of this old body. Right. This body is like a punching bag for the devil, ain't it? God redeemed this body. Yeah. Yeah. When Adam fell, the, the curse fell upon the body. And then it didn't fall just upon the body, but upon the soul, which is the mind, the will, and the emotion. Yeah. Our mind got affected. That's why our mind gets snappy sometimes. That's why our emotions, you know, get thin. That's why our will, you know, is want to give up at times. The devil attacks us in the mind, in the will, in the emotion, in the body, and he comes in and he cuts us off in our spirit. And a lot of times our spirit, you know, he tries to keep our spirit from contacting God. Go ahead. For we are saved by hope. But we're saved by hope. But hope that is that, that is seen is not hope. There's a hope that beyond what you can see right now. That's why the scripture said we walk by faith and not by sight. We're not walking by what we see. We're not walking by, you know, what's going on in our soul or in our mind or in our will or in our body. We, we're walking by what the word said. But that, that's the faith that is sustaining you. He has put a faith in you. He has put a seed in you. He has put something in you and you think you're keeping yourself. No, it's God's spirit in you keeping you. It's that faith that he's put in you. That is sustaining you. And we, and that's the hope that we have. Not hope we have in this earth, 
hope we have here is just temporal. But the hope, eternal hope, is the hope we have that we're going to enter into on the other side. Huh? The only thing we got to hope for is what we got now. Lord, Jesus, I don't want to go through that again. But there's a hope beyond anything that you can see. And your faith in God is holding on for that to be satisfied. Go ahead. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Uh -huh. But if we hope for that we see not, then do it with patience. Wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Ghost helps your infirmities. The weaknesses. All these things we're going through, the Spirit is in you to help you to get through these things. Uh -huh. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself making intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Spirit, it's not always in big words, or special words, but the Spirit, you know, just, just groaning, oh, oh. It's growing. The Spirit knows what you're saying. God knows and He understands. He picks it all up. Don't He? The Spirit itself making intercessions for us. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. Not just to shout. Not just to run around the church. Not just to feel good. But the Spirit is in us to express what we need to express to God the things that are necessary, the things that we need. The Spirit knows how to pray through these principalities, through these powers, through this weakness, through these fears, through these hurts. The Spirit knows how to pray beyond all of this and come before the throne of God and present your needs to God. That's what the Holy Ghost is in you doing. Uh -huh. And he that searcheth the hearts, he that searches the heart, knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. Uh -huh. He knows what the will of God is for your life. Uh -huh. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. According to God's will, he's making intercessions for you. And read the next one. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God. Everything worked together for good. You don't tell Joseph that. Here Joseph was told by God that he was chosen over his brethren and over his father. And the next thing you know, his brothers go and tie him up and uh, fix it, uh, put, him in, put him in a pit, leaving him down there in that pit. Brothers, brothers, why you done this to me? And they left him. They weren't going to kill him. But one of them said, no, let's put him in the pit because he had in the back of his mind he's going to come back and rescue him. And here they put him in the pit and they killed an animal and put blood on the animal and went back to the father and told the father that their brother, we don't know what happened to him, but here's blood. An animal must have killed him or something. And he left there in that pit. And his older brother was going to come back to get him, but it's too late. Some slave people come and got him. And he became a slave. And then he became a slave and they took him into Egypt. Well, he didn't know how to talk to Egyptian. And they become a slave over there. Didn't he? But he didn't know that all this was working together for his good. Sometimes you stay in the will of God. Things will work together for your good. That's why I said you walk not by sight, but by faith. Go ahead. And we know that all things work together for good. We know that all things work together for good. To them that love God. He didn't say everything coming in your life was going to be good, but everything worked together for good if you pray. And if you stay in Him and stay in the Word, He said, God, I, the devil meant it to destroy you, but I'm going to cause you to become stronger and wiser and greater. 
Uh -huh. To them who are called according to his purpose. Yes. For whom he did foreknow. See, God foreknew you. Did you know that? God foreknew you. He knew you before you were ever born, conceived. That's what he told Jeremiah. He said, in your mama's womb, I formed you, I called you before you was even born. I knew how your life was going to turn out. That's why you're here today, because you, God predestinated you to make it through these times. Because he, no, he foresaw when you heard the gospel, you was going to accept him. He foresaw when you heard about all of these things, you was going to walk in the fear of God and you was going to live for him. He already saw, he saw others was going to reject him. When he predestinated you because he foresaw you was going to believe it. Others, you know, he foresaw they was going to reject him. Many are called but fear chosen because when they heard the truth, they chose to obey it. Are you understanding me? Go ahead, verse 29. For, for whom he did foreknow. For whom he did foreknow. He also did predestinate. He did pre. I predestinated you because I saw you was going to accept me. I saw you was going to open your heart to me. I already saw it. That's what it will go ahead. To be conformed to the image of his son. See, this is your destiny. Not just to have a job and come home, nine to five, not just to have children, not just to have a husband or wife, but I predestinated you for something greater than that. Your eyes ain't seen, your ears hadn't heard what I have prepared for you. Go ahead. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Uh huh. Moreover, whom he did. Wait a minute. Verse 29, read that again. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Whom he foreknew, he predestinated to be conformed to the to image, be conformed of, to his the image of his son. See, God have already predestined you. He have already prepared and planned for you to be just like Jesus. And Jesus come down here and made it possible for you to have what he got up there in heaven. He said, as I am, so are you in this world. I'm going to give you my mind. What kind of love is that for the Son of God to give us freely eternal life, freely all these things that, that we have, all these things that he's laid for us in heaven freely, all because of Jesus' love for us. Go ahead. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Uh huh. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. He justified you with his blood, shed his blood, and said, No charges are against them. Satan, you can't accuse them. You can't bring this against them. I have clear them of all charges. I, even though they were born in sin, shaped in iniquity, yet I, I have cleared them. My blood have justified them. You can't bring not one accusation against them. God said, when I see the blood, I see Jesus Christ. I see his righteousness. I see his love. I see his long suffering. I see his mercy. I see, and I'm going to Forgive you. I'm going to give you life. I'm going to heal you. Not because of you, but because of Jesus. I'm justifying you. I'm setting you free. I'm opening the prison doors. I'm bringing you out from under all this bondage because of my son. Go ahead. What shall we say then to these things? What are we going to say to these things? If God be for us, if God be for us who can be against us? God is for you. God is for you. Look at somebody and tell them, God is for you. God is for you. God is for you. And if God be for us, who can be against us? All of this, read on. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Spared not his own son. His own son was saying, don't let me go through this. His own son was saying, 
the cup is more than, I can't take this. His own son was in that garden of Gethsemane and he was weeping, he crying, help me. I can't go through this, all this lying, all this suffering, all this, the world is upon my shoulder. I can't take it. God had to send angels down to help his son because, and then, before then, God had to send Moses and Elijah down to help comfort him. Jesus, you got to go do it. You're going to make it. It's going to be all right. And then angel come and strengthen him. That's why he was able to take them hand, put his hands up, and those nails go through his hands, and those nails go through his feet, and then and the side pierced him in the side. He went on that whooping because God gave him strength. His, when, when God gave him strength, his grace was sufficient for Jesus to bear all of our sins, all of our sorrow, all of our sickness, all of our pain. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read verse 32. How shall how shall he not with him also verse thirty two he that spared not his own son but God, delivered him up for us all God didn't spare Jesus from the misery from the agony from the pain from the suffering he loved us so much until he wouldn't spare his son from all of this and his son said okay I'll 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 drink this cup I'll take the suffering go ahead. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Uh -huh. Who shall lay anything to the Did charge? Did you from all of this? Now, now through the same Jesus, we have all things free. We have healing. We have victory. We have delivered through that same Jesus. Go ahead. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who's going to put a charge upon you? Who's going to condemn you? Who's going to put their foot on you? When I see the blessing of my son. Go ahead. It is God that justifies. It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemned? Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. That is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God. At the right hand of God. Who also make it intercession. Not only the spirit in you. Is praying and growing through you, but Jesus up there in heaven is, is praying for you. Remember my blood, Father. Remember on that cross. Remember my suffering. Remember them stripes I took. Remember all of this. I've been through all of this. For them, you got to bring them through. You see what they're fighting. You see what they're suffering. And I have went through all of this for them. Now you have got to bring them through. Hallelujah. Come on. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Shall tribulation? Who's going to separate you? Uh-uh. From the love of Christ. Thank God. I'm so glad he loved you and loved me. And he ain't let none of this stuff separate us from him loving us. I love him. I love him. I love him. Who's going to separate us from that love? Go ahead. Shall tribulation, shall tribulation, or distress, or distress, or persecution, or persecution, or famine, or famine, or nakedness, or nakedness, or peril, or peril, or sword, sword, as it is written, is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. And that love ain't nothing going to separate us from loving Him back. Nothing going to separate us from serving Him. Go ahead. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. We're like sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things. In all these things. We are more than conquerors. Did you hear that? In all these things. We are more Wait, than back conquerors. Back up, back up. Who shall back up? Read that. Who we shall, shall separate us from the love of Christ? Uh huh. Shall tribulation? We are more than a conqueror through these tribulations. Go ahead. Or distress. We're more than a conqueror through all this distress. Or persecution. We're more than a conqueror through all this persecution. Or famine. We're more than a conqueror through all this famine. Or nakedness. Nay, we're more than a conqueror. Or peril. Perils. 
or sword. Sword. One. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Yes. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Uh huh. Nay, in all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. In all these things, through Him. In all these us. things, in all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. In all these things, in all these things, here I am. <laughs> huh? See, he was there all the time. You look at here and there, he was always there. In all these things, 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 hey, in all these things, in all these things, been through some things, ain't we? Huh? In all these things. In all these things. In all these things. Yeah. Come on, you think about what you're going to eat here in a little bit. <laughs> no, he's listening to me. He's listening to everything I'm saying. That's right. In all these things, we're more. We're more. We're not failures. Huh? We're more a conqueror if somebody that goes in and conquer. But you don't have to do that. All you have to do is accept. You're more than a conqueror because you have accepted Jesus and fought the devil and went to hell and, and went on the cross and bled and suffered and died. And now, and now he said, all you got to do is accept it. I've already fought your battle. I've already whooped the devil for you. And all these things. Huh? And all these things you're going through. I have already bore with my stripes. I've already conquered. I've conquered fear. I've conquered diseases. I've conquered all these dis despairing things. All these things the devil brings. I've conquered them for you. All I ask you to do is open your heart to me. Accept me. I have already went before you. I've seen all the devil has got. And I told him it's written. Get behind me, Satan. He did that for you. Get behind me, devil. He done that for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He done it for you. Didn't he? You hear me? What? Uh-huh. What? Who had believed this report? Who had believed this report? He was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. And by his stripes, you are healed. You're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror through Jesus. Through Jesus. Hallelujah. He brought you home in peace, didn't he? He brought you home safe, didn't he? He brought you through. Look what he brought you through. All the way from the Philippines, all the way from Maryland, all the way through the things you've gone through here in Tulsa. And look at he's still with you. You're, he, it's not that what you've done, it's what he done for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, finish reading that. Nay, in all these things we what, are what more. Third seven. Yes, sir. Nay, go ahead. In all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Thank God. For I am persuaded. Yes. Wait, y'all remember Brother Joe said that time that uh, Muhammad Ali, how he went in a boxing ring and he fought and he conquered. And then when he come home, he brought the paycheck to his wife. So that made his wife what? More than a conqueror. <laughs> Somebody had already went in there and took the licks from. That's right. He he took a, a licking and we we're still a ticket because he fought for us. 
Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Come on. Through him that loved us. Through him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Uh huh. For I am persuaded. Wait a minute. What was that song uh, James Brown used to say? Say it loud. <laughs> Read on. Read loud. Nay. <laughs> Nay. In all these things. And all these things. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. To him that loved us. To him that loved us. Come on. For I am persuaded. For I am persuaded. That neither death. Wait a minute. You don't need that microphone. Just open your mouth and let it out. For I am persuaded. For I am persuaded. That neither death. That neither death. Nor life. Nor life. Nor angels. Nor angels. Death. Nor principalities. Death. death nor life. Nor angels. Nor, nor what? Nor principalities. Nor principalities. Nor powers. Nor powers. Nor things present. Nor what you're going through right now. Nor things to come. Nor what you're going to go through tomorrow. Nor height. No heights, no depth, no depths, no any other creature, no any other creature shall be able. Come on, get that microphone to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah! Boy, oh, that's good, eh? That's good. God giving us mysteries. God revealing things to us today. Try, so, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. I want to pray for every one of you. I want to pray for every one of you. I want to just lay hands upon you and ask God to help you. Help you. Strengthen you. Heal you. Touch your life. Touch your situation. Give you what it takes. Give you what you need. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For my grace is sufficient. For the word of God is spirit and is life. And I'm sending my word to you to strengthen you. To help you. For what you're going through and what you're going to be going through. You're in the days ahead. For I'm greater than all of these things that have come against you. I see your hearts broken. I see the heaviness. I see the grief that's going on. I was wounded for your transgression. I was bruised for your iniquity. I carried your grief. I carried your sorrow. Look unto me and live. Look unto me and take strength. And you will look back on this day and you'll know that I have directed this word to help get you through this time. Father, in Jesus' name, come on, everybody. Get in the line right here for just a moment. Let me pray for you. Let me pray for you. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Get in the line right here. Lord, touch. Thank you, Lord. Lord, strengthen. Lord, have mercy. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Yes, Jesus. God, touch him. Touch his life. You see what's ahead for him? A young man growing up, Lord. Help him to get through all these difficulties and temptations and things that he's fixing to go through. And God, give him the seed of this word. Let it go in. Lord, spare him from a lot of things that we have to go through. Through this word, let him open himself up to this word. In Jesus' name, put him on a solid foundation. God, you bless. Strengthen him and keep him. He's been through a lot. But Lord, that seed that was planted in him from a boy. That's what's keeping him there. God, that word, he'll hear in his heart that he might not sin against you. And now that word that he have kept, God, keep him. Let that word continue to bring him into a place of life and strength and peace by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, keep my brother Keep him on, going through a journey. Devil almost killed him two or three times. But God, I thank you that you're keeping him. In Jesus' name, continue to preserve and keep him by the power of your spirit. Jesus, now through with you. Ministry 
He's still got some. He's, he's still got some things for you to do for him. He's not through with you yet. That's why he kept you and spared you through these years and past. Because he's not through with you. God don't judge things by how, you know, how great we do or what small we do. He judged by our obedience to him. That's right. God got a reward waiting on you. You be faithful to him. You be faithful to him. Thank you, Jesus. God, you bless Sister Warner. You've been through these storms. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. God, keep Sister Warner. Keep her, Lord. You planted that seed in her. And Lord, that's why she's still here. She's like a tree planted. Planted. That this word's been planted inside of her. That's why she haven't faltered. Because the word has been planted. And Lord, let that word continue to take root and cause her to come forth with victorious strength. Keep Sister Warner. Heal her body. Heal her. Touch and strengthen her and bring healing in her body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, keep my sister. You see what you've gone through, how the devil attack your mind, how he'll attack your peace, how he'll try to do everything he can. But that word that was put in you, I foresaw even your mother and the faith that was in her and that faith I have put inside of you and that is what have kept you. It's been that word and that spirit of faith that's, that was put in her is now in you and you are being kept by my power through that word. Be faithful regardless of what you're going through. It's me that's in you that gives you the victory and give you the strength. Now I help you through all of this. Thank you, Jesus. You walk not by sight, but by faith. Not by what you see. Not by all the wind that's been blowing. Not by all the things that's been around you. It's that faith. Unshakable faith. It's inside of it. It's inside of it. God, keep my brother. Keep him strong. Lord, make him strong. Make a, a minister out of him in these last days. And put a word inside of him. Jesus name. Jesus in your name. All the hurt and all the things that he has gone through. God, the devil has tried to break him. Tried to wear him down. Tried to cause him to throw his hands up. But something down inside won't let him do it. In the name of Jesus. God, make him strong. Let him be made through all of these things that he's gone through. And Lord, prepare him for the days ahead. For I have looked ahead, my people. And there are things that you cannot see that I have prepared for your lives. Be strong. Be courageous. Look up. And you shall live. And you shall go through all of these things that the Lord have permitted to come in your lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God, you strengthen him. Jesus, he was with you in your most hurtest moments, in your most darkest moments. He was with you. He was there. He know it. He know all of these things you've gone through. That's right. And he, oh, look what he had. He ain't it you, it's him. Keep it. He keep it. When you lost your son, when you lost family members, and all this, he's the only one you got to look to and fall back on. And that's where he wants it. That's where he wants it. In Jesus' name, God grant it to be so. Hallelujah. 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 God's touching them. That's what happened. She just, she just fell up under the power of God's spirit. Hallelujah. Keep this boy. Keep your hands on his life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God keep her. Preserve her. And watch over her. In Jesus' name. Been through it. But you're still standing. And it's not you standing. It's him standing up in you. That's what's causing you to stand. 
even as the fire, even as the fire was in that furnace, and I brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego through. I'm going to bring you through these fiery trials. I'm going to bring you through all of this you're going through in your life. In the name of Jesus. And you need a healing too. You touch her body. And you grant the healing that she needs. And these burdens that she's been carrying. By the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Grant the mercy. Grant the mercy. Grant that mercy. Grant that mercy. Yes, Lord. Been through it. But you're still standing. You're still here. God has helped you. All this, you've been through some one storm after another, after another, after another. The devil have tried to attack your body, attack your heart, attack you in different areas. But it's been God that have caused you to come back up again. And it's going to be him that's going to keep bringing you back up. Keep your faith in me, my son. Do not waver. Do not look to the left, not to the right. For this word that have kept you will continue to sustain you by my spirit. Oh God, grant it to be so. Grant it to be so, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless and strengthen her. Yes, Lord. Been a journey, haven't it? It's been a journey. But who's been with you? Who's been, you know, you've had many thoughts of all the past years and all that you've been through. But it's been the Lord there that have brought you through all of these things. Never. Oh yeah, he brought you through in the 70s. He brought you through in the 80s. And they went on that and, and search you out of another state, Arkansas or somewhere. Search you out and brought you into this Lamb of God ministry. It's been him. Been him. It's been him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Continue. It's going to help you. It's going to touch you. It's going to touch your joints. It's going to touch your heart. It's going to touch your blood pressure. It's going to touch you right, right now. In Jesus' name. I want to feel the healing going in your body. I feel the healing going in your body right now. Hallelujah. Satan been trying to wear your health out, but I feel something restoring it. I feel something restoring it. Hallelujah. It's going to be all right. You stay encouraged. God, you keep him. Keep this young man. Keep your hands upon his life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We won't lay hands on him because I can feel the boy just a <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. Amen. God keeps Sister Mary. Satan tried to destroy her when she was a baby, but he couldn't do it because he saw that she was going to be useful in this last day. He saw these days and he tried to in her life when she was little, but he couldn't do it. And I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You're merging, you're rising up. All these things that you've been through. It was I that have kept you. It was my spirit that sustained you. It was I, even when the enemy came in and tried to destroy you, even in your youth, it was my spirit that sustained and kept you alive. Oh, my daughter, my love reaches out to you, strengthens you. My testimony is inside of you. Share with others how I have kept you. Thank you, Father. Strengthen her. Strengthen her heart. Strengthen her nerves. Strengthen her body. In the name of Jesus, bless her, Lord, and help her in the name of Jesus. I've seen you before. I've seen you before, haven't I? I know. So God, you touch her and help her with these things she struggled in her body. Things she struggled and wrestled with. And God, continue to keep all these things that have tried 
the devil trying to destroy you through these addictions and things, but God is going to help you and give you strength and cause you to get what you need for your spiritual life. And then it's going to go into your mind into your soul and then it's going to touch your body in Jesus name yes, granted to be so you got family members that really need help that's bound really need yokes broke off of them send your word touch these family members break these forces in Jesus name God you strengthen them I brought you through many storms my daughter I brought you through to establish you to put you on this rock, to cause this word, Satan tried and tried again to destroy you, but he have not succeeded because my love have kept you and sustained you, and I'm with you in this day. And look now where I have brought you from. Now I'm putting you on a solid foundation. Now I'm causing my word to be revealed inside of you. I'm causing my kingdom to begin to come forth in your life. Oh, look under me and I will cause you to continue to grow and become stronger in the things of God by the power of my spirit. God, you bring that daughter in. Bring her in. Bring her all the way in. All the way in. You brought her all the way, Lord. You brought her all the way, Jesus, from the Philippines. You brought her all the way. Boy, you've been through something since um, even before you came to this country. The devil done everything he could to try to detour and lead you another way. But God, eyes has been upon you. You have other family members that have tried to come in and try to follow this truth, but they haven't had what God has put inside of you because your heart was open and because I put my spirit in you and put my word in you. This is why I've sustained you through the heartaches and through all these things you have gone through and personal things and all these other things. I've seen how the enemy tried to attack your physical body. I've seen how the enemy have come in through different ways, but I'm with you. I'm with you. And it's I that have sustained you and kept you and will continue to sustain you. And I know how to bring these loved ones in. I know how to break these yokes off of them. I see how the devil is trying to entangle them and trying to put them another way. But I will send this word. Have faith. And I will bring deliverance. Oh God, grant it. Grant it to be so. Okay. Bring it so. Let it be so. Let it be so. God, this is a soldier. You plant your word in it. And God, now that word that's planted in it is blessing and strengthening and encouraging. And let it continue to strengthen and encourage it. Even the other week, I allowed that anointing and that word to flow to let you know that I'm finna pull you off the nest, pull you out from under the shelf and put you in a greater depths of my spirit. So the word that I planted in you will begin to blossom, will begin to come forth. God, you touch his stomach. Heal this that's going on in his body. I just read that scripture that he quickened this body, this mortal body. God, this mortal body needs strengthening, needs quickening it. Give him what he needs, God. Help him begin to a proper rest. Sleep that he needs. Help him, God, and bring in his brother. And bring in, God, his son. Bring in these others. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grant it to be so. God, touch Brother Niels. Touch his body. Quicken his body. Give life. Give strength. Give health. Jesus in your name. Touch it. Touch his horns. Devil been trying to, you know, just pull your health down gradually. But God touches your body. Remember this word, my son. I've given you this day through the reading of the scriptures. I know how to quicken 
mortified bodies. I know how to quicken his body that has been mortal bodies. I know how to give healing to his mortal bodies. I know how to give life to his mortal bodies. I know how to drive these infirmities out. I bore these things for you. Look unto me and you shall live. Look unto me and you shall get stronger. Look unto me and you shall see that I will continually touch you and lead you through these difficult times under my head. God, give him the strength. Give him the strength. Give him the strength. Touch Sister Bernice. Touch Sister Bernice. Boy, you've been through enough to, for two lives, for two lifetimes. All this hurt and all these things you've been through. But God is still with you. He's never left you. Hallelujah. What shall separate you from the love of Christ? I put my love in you. I put my love for truth in you. I put my word in you. Look at your daughter, how I have brought her in. And look at how my hand is reaching out to other family members. Have faith. I'm going to help you to get through these times. So this outward man perish. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. And I renew myself in you. I strengthen myself in you. Oh, Baba, Rehila, Baba. Jesus' name. It's been him that's carried you through all these hurts and through all these things you have gone through. It ain't been you. It's been him. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. And he's going to continue. He's going to continue to be there. He's going to continue to bring you through. He's going to continue to bring you through. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God give her the health. Touch this infirmity that have entered inside of her joints, her knees, and her body. Drive this old infirmity out and strengthen her. In Jesus' name, bring those loved ones back to you. Bring those loved ones back into grace. Bring them back up under the foundation. In the name of Jesus, touch God for the power of the Holy Ghost. Time is late, my people. Time is running out. Continue to be faithful and stand in the gap for your families and your loved ones. For there's a cloud, a dark cloud that's headed toward this nation. My people, I would have you to look to me for strength. Dig deep into prayer and into the word. And if you can see the evil one that's trying to take over this nation, that's trying to enter into the White House, then you would pray every day, even, even up until the election, that my will will be done. I'll speak to you as a body of people. Pray. Seek me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say so that that beast, the other woman riding on the beast, trying to control this White House. Y'all better pray. Father, you bless him. Strengthen him. Touch his heart. Touch his health. Touch his body. You see what God, he's hanging in here with his family. Thank you for blessing his mother. 109 years old. But still here with us. God, you keep him in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Keep his wife. Keep her, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm thankful that you kept her sister, Sister Erlene. She fought many battles. And but God, she's with you now. But Lord, her twin sister's down here. And she's got to finish her course. Help her to finish her course with joy and with victory like her sister did. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Bring in these others. Bring in these other ones. God, that's out there. That's out from under grace. Bring them back under the umbrella of grace. Bring them back up under the umbrella 
of your protection in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you bless Erica. Bless her daughter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, oh, ain't nothing else out there. Nothing else out there. That's why, you know, God planted that seed in you, Erica, when you was a little girl. You learned to walk in this church. You learned how to, that's right. You practically born here. God, you bless Erica. Never let her depart away from the faith that she have been raised up under and her sisters, the Wana, the Donna, and God, others, brother, others, God, touch them all and touch. And you got another two, one or two more? Huh? Uh, I thought so. I ain't seen them. Then you have a son named Deacon? I thought so. <laughs> you touch Deacon and touch her other son. And you bless him, God, and strengthen him. And Jesus, is it your son that uh, graduated from uh, high school when he's younger? That's a done son. Okay. I get y'all sons mixed up with God bless and have mercy upon all of them. Keep up in the faith that her mother was built up in. And let the same faith go inside of her. Jesus' name. God help him not to allow his faith to waver, but to continue to look under you. Continue to look under me. Stand on the faith. Stand on those scriptures. The scriptures cannot be broken. Keep your faith in the, in the word. And I have sent my word to sustain you. To heal and strengthen you. And to help bring you through this time. God touch. Jesus name. Give him what he needs. Touch his body. Touch his heart. Touch his organs. And give him Lord whatever that is missing. Restore. Restore that health. Restore that strength. Satan I rebuke you. I drive you away from God's people. I send you back to hell where you come from. In Jesus, Jesus name. Hallelujah. A good testimony. Give him a good testimony. Give him a good testimony. Strengthen Isaac. Strengthen Isaac. God you bless him and bless that word that's inside of him. And Lord, he's trying to be faithful in everything that he possibly can. Help him, Lord, to continue to be stronger and stronger and let the word flow out of him. Let it begin to flow. Lord, out of his belly, let that water of the word flow and strengthen. Be faithful, my son. Feed my flock. Even though it's just a few. Feed them. For where a few are gathered, they are in the midst. And be encouraged. And be strong. And you'll see that I'm preparing you for even greater things in the days ahead. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. God, and you bless this. Brother Ephraim's uncle from Florida. Touch him. God, you protect all of them. That hurricane that's coming that way. Protect his mother. And protect all the other family members. Lord, from that hurricane. We've already seen what Helena had done just two weeks ago. And there is another one coming. Headed that way. God, sustain them and keep them. And God touches uncle. And Lord, we ask you to touch the kidneys. Touch, Lord, his daughter and give her strength. Touch all of these different ones, family members, and help them to turn to you, Lord, not just, Lord,
going in the time of these hurricanes. But even in the personal, the individual battles and struggles, help them to turn to you in Jesus' name and give them that strength and that grace. And God, let all of his sins be blotted out. And Lord, prepare him if you're getting ready to call him home. You prepare him for eternal life. Prepare him for heaven. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Touch Sister Suki. Strengthen her. Strengthen Sister Suki in her body. In Jesus' name. Help her through these difficult times. Lord, I thank you. I heard your prayer when you called upon me the other day. I am with you. I have not forsaken you. I heard your cry. And I will continue to watch over you. Keep my hands upon your life. I command my word to give you the strength that you need. Jesus' name. If you have an offering you want to give, you can bring it up. Forgot to take it up. But if you have enough, stand on your feet. If you have an offering you want to give, we do appreciate it. Whatever you can do, thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Jenkins. Thank you, Brother Thank you, Brother Jerry.